Hello friends, and welcome to a very special and very on-time Thanksgiving Day video solely in the celebration of Thanksgiving and definitely not because of a science project due for my general chemistry class. But it's funny that you should mention chemistry because today we'll be taking a look at the chemistry of Thanksgiving, also known as how to cook a turkey, kind of. Now, when you're preparing your turkey, you should first submerge it in a substance known as a brine. A brine in its simplest form is a salt and water mixture, which is pretty simple I know, but it certainly doesn't have to be. You see, when salt and water mixes, the sodium chloride in the salt dissociates into positively charged sodium ions known as cations and negatively charged chlorine ions known as anions. The sodium becomes positive since it's a metal and it's losing electrons. The chlorine negative because it's a non-metal and it's gaining it. And this is the process that gives us our brine, which will help ensure your turkey will be nice and juicy this holiday season. And I mean, doesn't that just look delicious? So now that you're thoroughly brined, it's time to get cooking. In many store-bought turkeys, you'll find these little fellows, known colloquially as pop-up turkey timers and non-colloquially as tur timers for cooking turkey that pop up, these little gadgets are designed to show you when your turkey has reached a desirable and safe temperature. To achieve this, the timer utilizes the melting point of a lead, bismuth, and cadmium alloy. This alloy sits in the base of the timer, and when the turkey has reached approximately 165 degrees Fahrenheit, the alloy melts, releasing the spring and sending the stick that pops up up, letting you know that your turkey is done. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hold on one second. Didn't you just say that the turkey needs to be at 165-ish degrees Fahrenheit to set off the timer by melting the alloy? And I thought you just showed that all the melting points of all of these metals was far over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. What kind of monkey circus are you running here? And I hear you. And you're right, but the reason for this is because when metals mix or bond to form an ally, the melting point can be far less than that of the pure metals that make it up. This is due to the varying size of atoms causing the bonds between them to be weaker, meaning that the alloy's melting point will be less than the metals that make it up. So, say that cooking your turkey in the oven is just too safe for you. You seek thrills in everything you do. You, unlike the normal human being, would rather opt for the method of turkey making that could potentially spontaneously erupt and light you and your entire house on fire because, for some godforsaken reason, you want a deep fried turkey. If the situation was different, I would take the remaining time to try and convince you otherwise, but I'm not here to change your mind, I'm here to show you science. So let me show you the science behind why deep frying your Thanksgiving turkey could potentially be the largest mistake you've ever made. The reason? Simple. Because water and oil, much like me and certain types of cheeses, do not mix. The reason for this? Well, for me and cheese, lactose intolerance. For water and oil, polarity. Now, polarity is determined by the electronegativity of the atoms making up a molecule. Let's look at water, for example, which has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. As you can see, water has a bent structure. This is due to the two lone pair electrons at the top of the oxygen atom. If you look back at our table, you will see that oxygen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. This means that the electrons from hydrogen are being pulled in towards the oxygen atom, and this is why water is considered to be polar. But what if we look at the molecular formula for vegetable oil? We can see that it has these absurdly long chains of fatty acids, which are made up of carbon and hydrogen bonds. The lack of an electronegative atom, like oxygen in water, is what causes oil to be considered nonpolar. And as I mentioned, polar and nonpolar don't mix. And when the nonpolar component happens to be at an extremely high temperature, and happens to be extremely flammable when at a high temperature, you have the potential for disaster. So here's the scenario. You have a frozen turkey, it's been sitting in your refrigerator for a couple hours thawing, but don't worry, there's still plenty of water and ice on and inside of it. The only problem is that you're hungry now, and you just don't have time to wait around. So you fire up your fryer, and you get that oil to just below the auto ignition point. You fetch that turkey from the freezer, and you take that turkey and you slam dunk it into the fryer. At that moment, the ice and water that was on the turkey 
instantly vaporizes as it hits the boiling hot oil and it sends plumes and droplets of oil cascading over the pot due to all of the bursts of water vapor. At this point, all of that oil hits the flame below, igniting and causing a massive fireball that engulfs you and your garage and your porch and it ruins the turkey and it subsequently tortures your house and destroys Thanksgiving. And that's why you don't deep fry a frozen turkey. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you next time.